Okay, we are recording. Hi, everybody. My name is Jeannie Colin, and look who this is. Hi, Eric. Hi, Jeannie. How are you? Great. This is Eric Clerks, and he is in my meetup, and I wanted to jump on here and have him on here because he's been with me since the very beginning. Well, actually, maybe like after about six months you found me, but I wanted to yeah. do this like just really organic conversation because some of you guys know that Eric and I have collaborated. He's this amazing musician mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to have him come on because he found me through breathwork and then we've actually become very dear good friends and we've even collaborated so mm -hmm. I thought it would be great for you guys to hear uh, firsthand like from someone you know it might be easier to come to my class if, if you know me but Eric came and, and didn't know me but Sorry, that's like a lot to say. So introduce yourself, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So like Jeannie said, my name is Eric Clerks and I'm a professional musician. I've been playing and teaching music for like 20 plus years now. And it's the only thing I've ever done. <laughs> so, so good. I really, I'm, I'm so fortunate to be able to do the work that I'm doing. And I met Jeannie because I signed up for her meetup group and saw that she was doing a class at Athleta in the village yeah. in Woodland Hills. And I was going through a bunch of stuff at that time, a bunch of personal stuff and emotional stuff and processing a lot of trauma. And I said, oh, what the hell? I'm gonna give this a try. And from that relationship, grew this incredible friendship and these collaborations and this community of people that have all kind of centered around this breathwork practice. And it's, I, I mean, Honestly, it's one of the best decisions I ever made in my life oh my of, of starting this practice. And it's done so many great things for me, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, all of those things. So it's it's been great. Yeah, so Jeannie's awesome. I love you, Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, well, thank yeah. you. And I, I wasn't baiting you for that, but I think- <laughs> No, of course not. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what, oh, it's so sweet. But I think yeah. I just, yeah, like the community is so important to me and mm -hmm. I just want to get the word out, especially with these trying times right now and people need support and community and a practice that once they do it once, Eric, they, you know that they can do it on their own. It's not something that you have to rely on me or you, anyone else to have. So I'm always thinking about ways to get the word out for people who are perhaps, I'm going to send this out to my meetup. And if you're watching this on Facebook, if you're thinking I've never done that and, and what's it like, and maybe you've been hesitant to come to a class because it's maybe out of your comfort zone, this might be a really great opportunity because it's online. It's very small uh, amount of money that I'm charging. And you can do this in your own home. You have to drive home after you get to be in your own space. Hopefully it's, you know, more comfortable. And if you're one of my returnees, it's like, come back to the tribe and feel supported and um yeah we have i did my first class last week and what was really beautiful was the breath work and us coming together but was even was the, like a big bonus perk is that we had a share circle after and people were able to authentically and you've seen that eric right how mm -hmm. how much we come together as a tribe and support one another and people come in as strangers and and really feel uh, safe and supported. Absolutely, and it's so special to share this really profound, really powerful experience in a group setting like that, uh, because everybody, you know, you've talked about this before, you know, as we're doing breath work, as we're doing that circular breathing, that three-part breath, you know, our bodies are releasing oxytocin and we're re you know, releasing all of these hormones, and to share in that experience together and to have everybody kind of on that same level of like vibration and, you know, that like natural, physiological high that you get from doing breath work you know being able to share thoughts and feelings and emotions with people who are tuned into that same kind of state it's really really powerful it's really helpful yeah and especially nowadays because on a normal maybe a month ago when i did breath work everyone's coming in with their own issues right maybe mm -hmm. physical or mental or stuff but on top of all that that we had before coronavirus we're obviously all dealing with the coronavirus so now collectively uh, we're all here to support each other. And I feel like, I don't know about you, Eric, I kind of feel like with the coronavirus, it kind of comes in waves for me. I don't know. Mm. Like I, you know, some days are better than others. And then sometimes you dip and, and my coach would say like, we have expansions and contractions. And so it's kind of like when I'm in a expansion where I'm feeling good and, and I can give, it's like my time to support my people. And then for me to maybe ask for support, right? And I think maybe that's hard for people to ask for help, to ask for support. And like, what's your take, Eric, like being a guy, being our masculine, 
Um, <laughs> I want more guys on here because we know, yeah, I mean, we okay, just to put for the record, we have <laughs> guys that come to my classes, but yeah. sometimes we have more girls. So why do you think, Eric, guys who are listening to this, who've mm -hmm. never gone to breath work, who might think it's like woo woo or it's too emotional, what would you say? Mm -hmm. like, Benefit. So, so what I would what I would say is, um, especially if we're going to frame this from the perspective of the coronavirus and the health crisis that's happening in the world right now, you know, there's a a very strong uh, cultural conditioning that I think everyone has, but I think men in particular have this feeling of like when when things are going wrong, when there's a crisis situation, you know, we spring into action and we get the job done and we do all of these things, you know, and that happens generally at the expense of being able to check in on ourselves and recognize our feelings and our emotions and our highs and our lows because it's very much like you put the blinders on and you just go i have to go to costco i have to go to the grocery store oh my god these lines oh my god my kids are home all the time oh my god this is crazy and you just you go into that like you know that kind of fight or flight or that protection kind of mode you know and what i think breath work does is it gives us an opportunity to step outside of that role, to step outside of that conditioning that we have, and to reconnect with our emotional selves, which is a really important and a really healthy thing for everybody to do, not just men, not just women, everybody, just the whole, the whole planet, you know? <laughs> and, and reconnect with that feeling of being grounded and reconnect with that feeling of like, oh my God, like I really feel this way or that way. I'm really scared. I'm really nervous. I'm really excited. I'm really challenged right now, you know, and to just be with those feelings. Um, and it's such a healthy thing to be able to do that. Oh my gosh. I have like so many things to say. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay. go ahead. So a lot of you guys know if you've been following me on Facebook. So I do work primarily with, with men and I work with um, successful um, entrepreneurs and, you know, getting out of the stress and the anxiety and especially a lot of men. I want to just emphasize like all the things that Eric said, but then also like this practice is great because for the share circle after my class, that's of course optional. Like you don't have to stay for that. So if that's mm -hmm. not something that you're desiring, if you don't have the time, so a guy or any person who doesn't want to share their feelings or doesn't want to have that connection could opt out for it. So you can come to a breathwork class. You can do one-on-one -on -one breathwork with me and there is no, oh, I have to talk about this. This is not like therapy. So mm -hmm. that's one of the things like we talk about like a man who is in their masculine is really uh, focused on the details. Totally. Like you totally nailed it. Like one of the masculine traits is like the, the like getting the task done. Right. But mm -hmm. what, what we have with this coronavirus is like, it's not like you're going to keep yourself safe physically, maybe because you're doing all the tasks and your finances, right? But this huge component I love that you talk about is like your mental state and your emotional state affects your immunity, right? Exactly. So if you are producing cortisol, you're going to not be able to produce those antibodies and you are going to be in this flight or flight, fight or flight state, not making the best decisions because you're in this like panic state. The prefrontal cortex turns off when you're in panic and you don't make logical decisions. So what we want to like encourage you is, yeah, like there's so many benefits. And I just did a live on this today, Erica, like your mental state really matters right now. And yeah. you know what I've noticed too, is like I've people in my class. Okay. So I've had, you know, my friends and clients that I've touched base with this week. Um, and like a relative of mine too, has taken my class like many times and like people are getting, you know, anxiety and panicky feelings. They're forgetting to breathe. And I'm like, you've taken my class a dozen times or half a dozen times. So if people take in my class are forgetting to breathe and like they're feeling panicky and they're, this is what I'm thinking. You're watching TV, you're getting information, you're on social media. There's like all these things. I think it just like affects your nervous system differently, right? Like you could watch the news for half an hour and maybe you seem like you're okay. And then you watch like after three weeks of watching it three times a day in social media, like your nervous system just goes into overdrive. And I think, like we don't even yeah. realize it, like we're not even connected. Yeah, and you make a really, really great point about the the duration of this, you know, because if this were a natural disaster, like an earthquake or something, you know, the timeline for something like that is, you know, it's still huge, it's crazy. You think about the fires that we had, you know, earlier, you know, earlier in the year, and it was a, a really stressful couple of weeks kind of crammed in, it was all this energy. And at the end, when all the fires went out, there was this big release and everyone, oh, okay, we're fine. Mm -hmm. With the virus, we're talking, you know, the chances of us being in this really heightened kind of panicky fight or flight, you know, hyper stress state, like this can go on for months. 
this is a slow burn kind of situation. So, you know, people, people come into this thinking, oh, you know, I'm just going to power through this. I'm going to power through this and I'm going to burn all my energy and it's going to be fine. We're going to get through this thing. And yeah, that's okay in the short term. But when we're talking about two months, three months, four months, six months, who knows? You know, we don't really have an answer, which is part of why it's so scary. Um, the importance of being able to identify your emotions and give them an outlet and to, to see your feelings, to touch your feelings, to be, in, to be in touch with them. You know, it's such an important thing because, you know, we can't live. Could you imagine living in a fight or flight state for three months nonstop or six months nonstop? And just imagine the damage it would do. You know? Yeah, and I think it's, I think Americans, well, most of my people watching this, oh, by the way, my last class was international and it's going international again <laughs> because we have a meetup member who lives in the UK now. And I think my friend from Spain uh, and my other friend from France. So I think we're going to have international again. Um, but I think in our society, and so many societies, American society for sure, I have talked to, I went to my doctor's office and she was very clear that she's living on adrenaline and she's like at this, you know, very high fight or flight, like just like you're saying. And we think that that's okay and we think that that's normal and that's what I have to do and I have to hustle. The problem is, is that like you said, the effects of it, when you're in this fight or flight, that is so much stress on the body. That is so much inflammation. And I think I'm worried too, people are going to crash. Like you said, they're going to get... This is, I have to watch the news, I have to, and we're getting addicted. People are getting addicted to information and the news. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you know, I think too, also, what do you think? I think my um, opinion might be that people are addicted to information because it's like something to keep themselves busy, right? If you put away your phone and all that stuff, this inner work, like I think this the pandemic is gonna force some people who've never had to do this inner work and to connect with themselves and to sit with themselves. Yeah. Because I mean, some of us are living alone. Some of us don't have the distractions and the escapes. We're looking mm -hmm. for them. But if you can use this time to, yeah, work on going within. Yeah, exactly. People, exactly. And it's, it is. And I, I was thinking, you know, it's funny. I had that exact same thought a few days ago and just thinking like, what, you know, everything that's happening in the world is really tragic with the deaths and the sicknesses and the illnesses and all that stuff. Um, at my core, I'm an optimistic person. And I'm always looking for the silver lining in whatever the situation is. And to me, the, the silver lining, the opportunity for growth in a situation where everyone is locked down at home, you know, you're with your family or with your housemates or your roommates or whoever it happens to be, or you're alone, you know, in some cases. Like for me, I'm basically by myself yeah. for a big yeah. chunk of the day. Yeah. And it's, it's such an incredible opportunity to to do that inner work, to read books that you've been meaning to read, you know, to go through and enrich your life. You know, you still have to, you know, if you, if you have the opportunity to work, it's good to work. If you have the opportunity to be with your family, that's fantastic. You know, talk to your friends, get on Zoom, get on Skype, whatever, see those faces and have that interaction. But also remember that it's okay to turn off the TV and it's okay to put down the phone and pick up a book or just sit and meditate, you know, put some music on, on your headphones and just, just be with yourself. And it's such a powerful thing. And it's such a wonderful thing. And I hope that people are taking advantage of this time that we have and this opportunity that we have to, to do that work. Yeah. yeah. And I noticed with my class too, because like I said, I shared with people and then I talked to a few friends who did it after mm -hmm. and you know, one friend admitted that she hasn't done anything really for self care. Yeah. And wow, she's sure doing a lot for other people. She's a mom. She's sure doing tons for other people. So the practice, and I had a, a person who wanted to sign up for the class, but she had to do some work. Um, so I said, no, I really want you to dedicate this time to it. So you have to put aside, I don't know, hour, hour, 15 minutes just for yourself. Exactly. So practicing with your breath and being self-aware. And I think I say this in my class, you've probably heard this a million times there, how you do one thing is how you do anything, right? So uh, giving yourself that permission, right? And giving yourself this this time and and yeah, and I actually got really, you weren't on, like I said, the first one I did was mm -hmm. last week, but we're doing this one Sunday and Eric, you'll be there, but I actually got moved to tears um, at the end of the breath work because oh, yeah. for me to, yeah, I was, I had, there was a few people on the call that I hadn't connected with uh, mm -hmm. prior. So it was like the first time seeing some of my friends and a few meetup members I hadn't seen. 
Mm-hmm. So to see them on the call and then to see people being so vulnerable and being really allowing me to hold space for them during this vulnerable time, I, I take that very you know seriously and I, I'm so honored that people you know come together. So yeah, I mean, this is the best thing I know to help people going through stress. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're dealing with anxiety, stress, if you're, I did talk to one person who is completely doing great, no issues. And so if you're like one of those rare people who's stress-free, I'd say, okay, keep it that way and do some of these practices also. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's such a it is such a dynamic situation. So somebody who's doing really well in this particular moment or has been doing fine over the last few weeks and is really coping with the stress, you know, because things are changing, we it's still good to keep that practice moving yeah. and to keep yourself open because it's kind of like, you know, it's like somebody saying, well, I feel really good right now. So I'm going to skip going to the gym for a few days or whatever, you know, and it's one of those things where it's, it's a practice, you know, like, like exercise, like meditation, like anything else where it, it takes maintenance and it takes effort and it takes presence in order to keep those channels open and to keep everything kind of flowing and moving in a healthy way. And it's easy for these little blockages to pop up. So, you know, regardless of one's state, you know, one's state of mind, it's, it's nice one to have a routine to say, okay, when I wake up, you know, I'm going to meditate for 30 minutes or I'm going to do breath work for 20 minutes or whatever, whatever it happens to be. Um, But just to have, to build the wellness into your routine you know, and not treat it like a special treat or something that you're going to do when you have time for it, but to just, you know, build it in. And it's, it goes so much further and it works so much more effectively that way. Yeah. And for those of you who are curious, I'm going to be doing this online Sunday at 11. That's my time slot. So as Mm -hmm. long as people are interested and they are, we're going to be doing it this time. And I actually had like a funny analogy. I was thinking when you said that about doing a practice and doing Mm -hmm. something, it's, I would think it'd be like going to the gym, right? If you said, okay, Eric, I'm really fit. I don't need to go to the gym anymore. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> or right. Or like my meditation right. practice. I meditated. So now I don't have to meditate ever anymore. And that's like, ooh, mm-hmm. that's actually the secret, right? Like that's the secret to, to being fit and to being in a clear mind and state. And so, yeah, regardless, trust me, you guys, like before the coronavirus was even a thing, like all the daily struggles, obviously even before this, I mean, this is a safe place. And I know one of my members like, okay, 11 o'clock AM, I can kind of, if I, I know I have that state, it's like seeing your psychologist or your therapist. It's like, you know, you have that time to process. And that's what we're talking about. You guys is like processing these feelings. There are so many things coming at us. And like you said, where you think you're kind of managing or, Oh, I'm fine. It could be that little darn thing that you hear that just puts you over the edge and you didn't even see it coming. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, thank you so much. And I wanted to share too that because of Eric, our sound quality and music (laughs) is like, state of the art now you guys I have a professional <laughs> thanks to Mr. Eric who uh so nicely generously helped me we spent a little bit of time getting the kinks out so the music to speaking ratio should be beautiful uh, absolutely yeah <laughs> that's going to be fantastic and I just wanted to reiterate that if you've never done <laughs> breath work if you've never tried practicing it before this is a really fantastic opportunity to get together with a supportive group of people in the comfort of your own home with a coach who is so fantastic and so present and so aware of all the physiological and mental things that happen when you're when you're trying breath work for the first time you know speaking for myself i was so happy that i sought out a class with an instructor with a coach who really knew her stuff because for myself, my first experience was very intense and it was very physical. And to have someone kind of in my ear, you know, whether it's online or in person or whatever, to have someone giving me feedback in real time as we're going through this process, you know, it's, it makes all the difference in the world, you know, and I I love practicing on my own, but there's something really special about getting together with Jeannie and other members of the breathwork community, other members of our tribe and, really tapping into that energy together and it creates such a uh, it's such an incredible feeling so try it out if you can you know if you carve out the time carve out the hour for yourself and come and join us because it's a really magical experience it's really transformative and you're going to feel better you're going to feel different you're going to feel more tapped in to 
yourself and your place and time right now, which I think is really important, that we all stay really present and we all stay in touch with our humanity and in touch with our sense of community and our love for each other and our families and our kids and the strangers at the grocery store and the whole thing, you know, just remembering that we're all in this together. Yeah, and that was a good point too about community. I mean, I could talk about how community is shown to boost your immune system too. So, and thank you for such kind, nice words. I really appreciate it. Um, okay, let me think if there's any closing things. So I guess the only thing, if you don't even, you don't even need a yoga mat, you could just put, you could just be on the carpet or, or have a blanket. So it's really like, maybe have some earphones. It'll be a little bit better sound, don't you think, Eric? And then absolutely, yeah. water nearby and that's it. And like I said, you could definitely jump off after an hour if that's all you need. And then this like supportive community that is so safe and that is the best compliment when someone tells me it's safe and lots of people told me last time. So I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, Eric. I'll see you on Sunday and um, just signing off. Anything else? There we go. Awesome. No, thank you. Thank you very much, Jeannie. It was great talking with you. And I'll see everybody on Sunday uh, at 11 o'clock in the morning Pacific time. Is that right? Double yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay, good. Cool. Pacific, yeah. So, yeah. So, and yeah. if you're watching this in Europe, I know there's a time change on the 29th of March. So it will be nine hours different in Europe. So um, just FYI on that. But yeah, and even Perfect. if you're watching this and you can't do it on Sunday, like share this out, guys. Like I really need you to expand this. If you're one of my friends and family, just share it out, tag someone, send it to someone else because I was only doing live events in LA and I was going to be traveling a little bit. And now I just want to get this international. And if you speak Spanish, I'm coming for you. That's coming in the future too. So um Lots of good stuff. Okay, signing off. Thank you so much. See you guys on Sunday. Bye, everybody. Bye.